Hi Taurus, this is the Alchemist Astrologer with your 2020 overview. Taurus Suns, Taurus Moon, Taurus Rising. And this is a glimpse into what you should leave behind in the old 2019 and what you should be taking with you into 2020. All right, so what to leave in the past? So this is an attitude or a situation that is time to let go of. And you have the Hermit and the Two of Wands. So there's some kind of review, a review of information. Uh, it could be something that you're working on as far as education. Uh, it could be your review of age, of your health, of your well-being, of being alone. You are trying to figure out if you should join forces with someone or uh, take an opportunity that's in the offing. It could be to travel, it could be a job offer, it could be to relocate, it could be any number of things. And you're going to have to review some information or something is going to come to light. Uh, and you're looking over that. You're doing this review, closing up some loose ends. And in that process, there probably was some confrontation between you and another person. You may have a strong tie to a Virgo, but you are looking at something. You're gaining some enlightenment or you're offering that to another person. Maybe you're mentoring, guiding, or you're receiving some kind of guidance. But there's something about this situation that you need to leave in the past. And it could be this critical attitude or not being objective enough or not using logic, not using common sense, being gullible to something or not accepting good advice. Because again, you have this card that something is being revealed. You're pulling back the curtain on something. And maybe you're exposing something or something is exposed to you. And you're going to have to trust your intuition about what that is. Something comes to light. You gain some kind of spiritual awareness, and it could be through a stressful situation, could be something crisis-oriented. And once you do this review, you know that you know this is something that you're going to have to put to the side and leave behind. You're going to have to trust your gut, your instincts. Otherwise, other people are going to take what rightfully belongs to you. If you hesitate, if you have self-doubt about who you are, what you want, where you're headed, then somebody else is going to step in and steal the opportunity. They're going to try to intimidate you or manipulate you. This is also, though, about, you know, shooting from the hip, um, acting on impulse. This is a card of, you know, ruled by Mars. And so you're going to have to you know, check your ego at the door, perhaps, in some instances. Uh, because it could be that you realize once something comes to light, you don't know as much as you thought you did about a circumstance. And in the interim, you know, you're being very critical. Uh, you're on the offense, or you're meeting with that. So somebody's going to realize that they don't know what they think they know. They don't hold the authority. They're not the authority on something that they thought they were. So there's a, an important review where you become enlightened about perhaps an attitude or a situation that you just need to let go of. And again, some kind of the need for personal space could be important biding your time in a situation or keeping people at arm's length, especially when you need that break to maintain your spiritual, emotional, or physical well-being. Now, what should you let go of in the future? So this is a mindset, a resentment, or an ideal or other situation that you need to let go of if you want to achieve your desired outcome. And you have the Lover's card and the Queen of Cups. And so for some of you, there could be a strong tie to uh, a Gemini person. But for others of you, perhaps this is you being overly influenced by your partnerships or by the choices that you have to make, being gullible. Because again, this is a review of some kind of information that has come to light. And you're going to have to be more logical, be more objective, see other people clearly for who and what they are, as well as yourself. Because the Queen of Cups can be very self-indulgent. 
She can be hypersensitive or she can go the other extreme and lack any emotion or sympathy or empathy at all. She's only concerned with her own self. In the extreme, she's a martyr. She's uh, loving too much, giving too much. She's enabling. She is a victim. She is making all of these unnecessary sacrifices. It could be you, you need to look at your role as a mother or you know, some relationship that you have with your mother. Uh, it could be your maternal instincts that you need to examine. But there is a choice to be made. And instead of always trying to people please, perhaps it's now time for you to speak your honest truth about how you feel. Recognize what your priorities are. You may have people that intrude or impose and you feel obliged to let it happen, uh, even though it's taking you off your directed course. So this may be you offering more love and caring in a partnership or recognizing what the boundaries are and when to draw the line. And this is about using your intuition in order to guide you. Whatever your gut is telling you, and you have two cards about intuition, gut checks, instincts, you need to pay attention to that about who you align yourself with. Now, for some of you, you're going to reconnect with someone from your past and you're going to have to use your intuition about is that a good idea? How much loving should I give? Should I pull back my emotions? Or you're going to, you know, somebody is coming that's going to be very important to your destiny, to your future. And again, it's going to be important that you tap into that inner guidance to, de to determine whether a partnership is right for you. Now, what should you take from the past? What is it that you've been doing, a past mindset or a quality that has been working for you and that you should continue to leverage into the future, into 2020? You have the Emperor card and the Knight of Cups. So perhaps you're trying to establish some kind of agreement contract. You may be in negotiations. This may be about offering something. This is about you gaining control, perhaps over your feelings or what's being offered, what you choose to accept. This is a card of leadership where there could be something on the table that gives you more personal independence, more security, more power. Uh, this is about, you know, being fearless in that you're willing to take on more responsibility, more demands, more challenges, because you want to uh, determine the outcome of your destiny. But also it's about feeling comfortable in your own skin and telling people exactly what it is you want or where they need to go. Now, the emperor is a strong figure. So for some of you, perhaps you're relying on somebody in your life, uh, a strong male figure, a husband, a father, a boyfriend. But this is about you being discerning about the exchange of power. Is there an abuse of some sort, taking the initiative, facing the consequences of something? The King of Cups says that you have to be discerning because there could be some instances where somebody's not being altogether honest, upfront, open, and you need to use your intuition to clue in on that. And in some cases, perhaps you need to be careful about what you reveal, what you put out there. Maybe play your cards close to the chest. So knowing what to give, what to receive, and how much to hold back could be critical. You have the power to look at other people and see inside of them, see their motives, and use that to uh, come out on top. So this is about responsibility, and it could be, you know, you're dealing with some stress or you're putting some stress behind you, uh, but there's something, some kind of agreement. Maybe this ties to your work, or maybe it ties to property, uh, maybe it ties with government dealings, but there's generally something on offer where you want to connect with people who are of like mind, and you may be taking a leadership role, the initiative to do that. You may be offering your gifts, your talents in your work. Uh, you may be leading other people along. Now, what should you use in the future? This would be a past or current gift or mindset to play up in the future that would help you achieve your desired ends. 
You have the King of Wands and the Star card. So we have fire, we have air. Uh, this could be a Leo, Aries, Sagittarius. Uh, for others of you, there may be a tie to an Aquarius or a mixture of both. So this is taking control, taking charge of something that you feel passionate about. Uh, you know, having hope for the future. For some of you, this is about taking charge of your talents, developing your skills, and perhaps putting yourself front and center, having more authority, being more of a leader, and finding yourself front and center because of it. Perhaps you become some type of star, or you're highlighted, or you're in focus. For others of you, this may be about uh, your health, taking charge of your health. Something has come to light where you realize that you need to take better care of yourself or someone in your life. And so you may have a connection with a healing agency of some sort. Perhaps you are a healer or you're dealing with some. Uh, this is also about taking charge of where you are vulnerable. This is getting back to that Queen of Cups. There are appropriate situations where you should make yourself vulnerable. You should, uh, you know, open up. And then there are other cases where you need to be aware of your vulnerabilities. There is definitely some change for you on the horizon, an important change. And at this point in time, you may not be able to see it, but this is very future oriented, very hopeful, very optimistic. You may be receiving guidance again from your spirit guides, from source. You may be drawing upon a well of inspiration, being very passionate about you know what you're inspired to do. And, you know, recognizing the beauty of yourself, of others, not just outer, but the inner as well. Uh, you know, recognizing your talents and getting some kind of accolade or notice because of that. So you're taking charge of a situation. In, in some cases, that may be to get some kind of assistance, to get help, or to offer that to others. Uh, so for some of you, this is about relying on your faith, relying on your hope, but also being aware of when you've been too unduly influenced and you've, you're placing some false hope in a situation. But this is about optimism. So taking charge of your talents, the you know offering to others, drawing upon your well of inspiration, those are gifts that you have that you should be bringing into the future. Now what is the big lesson for you? in 2020? Where will you be focusing your energy or where you should be? And where will situations be, you know, focusing on, centered around? You have your own card, the Empress card. So this is about being your best you, the qualities of Taurus, seeking security, taking pleasure in life, noticing the little things, the sensuality of life, but also the practicalities and offering that to others. So this is about your willingness to help. There's something that you will be working on during the year that you want to grow, you want to give birth to, whether that is a child, whether it is a relationship, or it's a project, or several things. You are trying to create a circumstance where you feel a sense of wellness, a sense of wholeness, a sense of happiness. So your creativity, your productivity, your fertility is in focus during the year. And again, this is about putting forth practical effort, taking the steps necessary, knowing that some things have to incubate. And while you're in that wait period, you're having to nurture and grow. Uh, and so for some of you, it, this thing is going to take some time to evolve and that's okay. Even take pleasure in that evolution, the journey of it. So for some of you, this is about giving birth to something. And as long as you are consistently applying yourself throughout the year, you are making headway. Even when you can't see it, you're inching closer to that finish line. It's also about your expression. Uh, you know, this is a card that connects to Venus. So your voice your throat, your, you know, maybe you have some kind of talent, could be artistic, could be vocal, could be speaking, whatever that is, you are meant to take charge and develop those latent talents, those skills that will put you front and center. This is also about 
again, some maternal instincts. Something is your baby, whatever that is, and you are responsible for making sure that it grows into something, that it blossoms, that it's healthy, that it's taken care of. So that that onus is placed upon you for growth, whether that's personal or whether you're offering something to someone. And, you know, throughout the year, you're going to need to be cautious about becoming apathetic, thinking that it's just going to arrive on a silver platter or you don't have to put forth effort and, you know, becoming lackadaisical, uh, maybe going too far. Again, this is a queen. This queen of cups can be very self-indulgent. So this is about pleasure seeking without thinking about the consequences. It's about knowing how to strike a balance. What are you doing too much of or too little of? Where are you going too far? Where are you taking things to extremes? Whatever that is, whether you're trying to work out and, and look really good and you're overdoing it or you're not exercising enough or you're not concerned about your health or your food or your presentation or your business or you're, you're, you're not involved the way you should. There's some extremism. So you're going to have to strike a balance throughout the year to create that healthy sense of well-being. And what is the question that you need to continuously ask yourself all throughout the year in support of that? Am I ready to let go of this buried shame? Now, you have a couple of cards here that talk about splendor, inner beauty, recognizing your gifts, your talents. So whatever, you know, you have, where it's time for you to step up front and be seen. Whatever shame that you've been holding on to, or perhaps you're nurturing others, you're providing that maternal support. And this is whether you're male or female. We all have uh, feminine energy. You're providing that to others to help them release themselves from the chain of shame. So the feeling of shame is the lowest energy frequency there is. When you live in shame, you live in darkness. What part of you is ready to stand in the light? And is there any shame from a past experience that is ready to be healed? So you're gaining some spiritual enlightenment. Something is coming to light. You're doing a review. You're taking charge. And perhaps you may be offering something or taking more authority to connect with people who think the way you do. They have the same values. They're on the same path. And you're having to look at your partnerships where you are giving too much or not giving enough. So your sole action throughout the entire year is to heal the shame by giving it a name. Bring it into the light. Let it be seen, heard, and healed. This year is your revival season. Replace the shame with your soul's truth. And so... You know, the challenge for you is to fill in the blank. My soul's truth is. What is your soul's truth? This is the year to discover that. And in support of that, wow, the answer is you. That's very powerful, Taurus. You've got a lot of power and authority in your hands about how you will help to heal, what you will bring to light, what kind of partnerships you will form, uh, what, you will, what is your gift, what will you offer. And if you're ready to make some changes or put in the effort or give birth to something, the answer is you. Now, your advice card is, I am the dreamer of my dream. This is one of my favorite cards out of this deck. So you determine what your dreams are. This is a year for you to claim your personal authority, not what you've been told, not how you've been conditioned, but what do you want? What do you aspire to? What are your dreams? You are the master of those dreams. And you also have Taming the Wind. So let's see what that is all about. So here the feather a symbol that is used in clearing ceremonies for smudging reminds you of the sacred commitment you make to your life. This is the symbol of consciously bringing the spiritual into the material, infusing the world with reverence and an acknowledgement of the higher planes of existence 
that influence and animate all life. The feather is a symbolic reminder of deliberately entering a, into a partnership with the great spirit to co-create for the highest good of all. So again, this speaks of partnerships, choices that you're making. It's time to clear your energy, be present, and become conscious of how you communicate this is a good time to write in a journal, put your thoughts into a cohesive form. Perhaps you need to actually do a smudging ceremony in your home or office, creating a sacred space to write about your dreams and desires. Just remember that when taming the wind appears as a symbol, it is time to honor the great spirit with reverence and respect. So for some of you, uh, you know, this is about disseminating information, whatever that is, educating others, mentoring others, teaching, writing. You could have some projects that connect to that. You're forming some partnerships. You're connecting with people of like minds, becoming a leader, where your talents are developed and highlighted. The underlying energy is this Eight of Pentacles. So you are working on something and this should be a labor of love for you. You're willing to put in the time and effort. It could be something you're doing with your hands. Maybe you're creating something beautiful. Maybe you're a craftsman or you're an apprentice. There's something that you're doing and you're trying to build up your security. You're trying to move up the ladder of success. Uh, and so you're working hard with a lot of diligence to develop a craft or a skill. And whatever this is, because it's a labor of love, you, sense, you feel a sense of renewal. You have faith in your work, and that's important. Faith in what you're working on, what you're putting out there, putting something out into the wider world of quality, something that is meaningful. It could be even providing security to others. It's also important, though, that you recognize when you should step back from a situation in order to rejuvenate, refresh yourself. So if you've been doing something over and over and over and over, perhaps you're a workaholic or you're too critical of self, of others, of your work, uh, this is about being careful of not falling into a rut when you need to get some sense of renewal to step back and to rely on your faith to, for that sense of renewal. So you're working on something. For some of you, there's a focus on bills. Maybe what you're doing is going to pay off for you ultimately. And you feel a sense of renewal that you're headed in the right path. And remember, the answer is you. Whatever it is you're doing, as long as you are applying consistent effort, it is going to pay off for you. So ultimately, this is about your future, your destiny, and those that connect to that destiny that have a bearing on your future and your path. All right, Taurus, I hope you enjoyed this reading. I wish you much love and success in the new year. Happy New Year. Good luck with 2020.